What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Call Game, Kenny For Real, whatever you want to call it, man. We have to talk about today's slate of games. I got to admit, these West Coast games have been kicking my butt. I'm 24 now, but I swear I feel like I'm 46 where I need to be in bed by a certain time, and these West Coast games prevent me to do that. But I knew today had to be an episode because James Harden made his appearance with the Brooklyn Nets. It's so weird to see how some of the players are playing immediately and some of them aren't. Wow, that's on my mind. Get well soon. Karis LeVert, like this is so insane. I don't know biology. I don't know anatomy the human body health or anything like that but to hear that he had what a mass on his liver or, or on one of his kidneys it's some scary it's just just the terminology sounds scary so I don't know how long he's going to be out it's kind of like a blessing in disguise that he got traded because he had to pass his physical and maybe this is something that he didn't even notice until weeks and months down the line so is it is it I don't know how to put it into words, but hopefully he gets well soon and, and we'll see him on the court sooner rather than later um, but Brooklyn and James Harden Today was the day. I love Twitter and I hate Twitter in the same way because this this is going to sound disrespectful and I don't mean it as disrespect, but I can see you taking it as that. This was the most watched Orlando Magic game of the season so far and probably going to be the most watched Orlando Magic game of the season. You got to think about it. Whether you were watching legally or le illegally, everybody wanted to see James Harden's first game. And they didn't disappoint. He didn't disappoint. And a 30-point triple-double, it's crazy how, like, People have forgotten in just a couple weeks how good of a player James Harden was or is. A 30-point triple-double, he was doing that very regularly over the last couple seasons. Where have you been at? Oh, it's just, it's just a surprise because now you're watching? I don't, I don't really know. I don't really know. This is what he does. Nothing James Harden did today was like, oh, that's different. Other than I think he took like one or two mid-range jump shots. I don't think I've seen him take a mid-range jump shot since 2018 is what it feels like. So he took a couple of mid-range jump shots. He was barking a little bit. He was getting in the passing lanes. Maybe maybe a little more defensive effort because he knew everybody was watching today. Overall, the team looked good offensively. I, I swear that Kevin Durant gets the most effortless buckets of all time, bro, because I'm watching this game, and nobody puts up a silent 42 points. But, like, there was, like, halfway through the third quarter, and I looked at the box score. I was like, I cannot – I don't remember him scoring that many points. But it's Kevin Durant, so I couldn't question it because I noticed what he do. So, like, offensively, they look good. I, one thing I'm going to love about this is that with the Brooklyn Nets being going to be a, a fun team to watch, everybody's going to be tuning in, whether it's League Pass or whether it's on national TV. A lot more people are going to realize that Joe Harris is a lot more than just a catch-and-shoot three-point shooter. It's kind of the reputation he has got because he's so damn good at it, good at it, and he won a three-point competition in Charlotte a few years ago. But he's a lot more than that, and today you kind of saw that. But the two biggest question marks that I had going into this trade and, and that kind of showed in this first game were the defense and DeAndre Jordan at the center position. Again, you don't want to overreact to a single game, but, like, we kind of expected this, right? When I was talking about this trade initially a couple days ago and I was talking about them losing Jared Allen and how much it's going to hurt, I saw a lot of comments like, Kenny, they still have DeAndre Jordan. DeAndre Jordan is still good. And that just told me you haven't really watched this season. That's all it tells me. That man has not been good this year. And and the worst part about it is that, like, the one thing that you would expect him to, to bring to the team is his vertical spacing. Vertical space. I, I just love putting those two words together. Basically, what that means is he can be a lob threat. And so far in that first game, I expected him to catch a couple lobs from James Harden because he's James Harden, right? If James Harden's going to have a seven footer on the floor, I just anticipate them running a PNR and then he's throwing the lob and somebody's going to get it. And it didn't work today. It didn't happen today. And maybe that's something Steve Nash incorporates eventually. But if he's not in a vertical threat and he's not guarding anything, why is he on the court? And I think Steve Nash and them realized that because I don't know if he played a single fourth quarter minute because uh, they went ultra small ball. And I kind of feel bad for Jeff Green because I feel like he left Houston because he was tired of playing small ball center. And now he's going to be closing out a ton of games at the small ball center. So, uh, yeah, the defense was kind of iffy and DeAndre Jordan uh, was bad, too. But. This is this is I don't know with Spencer Dinwiddie going out. I know that they apply for the disabled player exception, but I don't know if they use part of that in the James Harden trade. Maybe somebody in the comment section can help me out there. But um, it's going to be hard for them to trade for a center. I think that what they're hoping for is that, you know, they continue to do what they do. They get wins because this team is going to be able to win a ton of regular season games strictly based off them outscoring people. You have James Harden and and. and Kyrie eventually and Kevin Durant you're going to outscore a ton of teams but you're hoping that once you get towards the trade deadline and the buyout market comes around you can snag a center let's be honest with, with each other man the, the buyout market is super super great for these super team type teams that are that are projected to win a championship because at the end of the day everybody wants a ring on their resume so you may see an older center that gets bought out 
and now he wants to play in Brooklyn, and he could be the determining factor. The good the good sign is that Reggie Perry played good quality minutes at the center position, but I don't think you think about Reggie Perry long-term this season because you don't expect a second-round rookie to be playing high-quality playoff minutes or even finals minutes at the end of the day. Um, anytime my boy Bruce Brown, and yes, I'm saying my boy Bruce Brown, ends up making a big play, uh, I feel elated. I feel super happy for him, and today he made the dagger of a three with, a, with like a minute and a half to go. Um, but the defense was a problem, and shout out to Nick Vucevic, bro. They they put on a show. This could easily have been a game that mirrored their last couple games. I think in the last four to five games since the Markel Fultz injury, this team did not crack a hundred points until tonight. And Vucevic was taking advantage of whoever was guarding him. Um, and and another thing that's going to be a struggle for them is their ability to guard centers, especially centers that can stretch. And if you think about the Eastern Conference, the Eastern Conference has so many centers that can stretch. Now, all of them can't do the inside-outside that Vucevic does, but think about all. Think about these teams. The Bucks have, like, Brooke Lopez who stretch. Miles Turner is a stretch. Um, Joe Embiid has been hitting his three-point shot probably more than usual, but I wouldn't call him a stretch, but he can. Um, who, who else are we talking about? Maybe that's it. I don't want to say Aaron Baines. I don't really want to say Aaron Baines. Yeah, a uh, Garden Center is going to be a real problem for them this season, and hopefully that changes on the buyout market. But again, shout out to Orlando Magic for coming out to play. Vucevic looking great. People were saying free Vucevic, and I understand you saying that, but I feel like Vucevic's name has been in rumors at the trade deadline for four seasons now, and he has yet to be traded. Um, and I don't know what team is trading for Vucevic right now. Every I feel like every team that needs a center doesn't have the money to get a center, and then the teams that you will want to see Vucevic on don't need a center. So, yeah, that, that's that's kind of my opinion. I'm just still waiting for Kyrie. It was rumored that he could have possibly played today, but he was a late scratch, which is kind of trash, kind of trash. So today was a weird day for me. Um, on the Saturday, had errands, had video shoots, so I didn't, get a, I didn't get around to watching every single minute, every single game. So a game that I came in late to was the Charlotte Hornets versus the Raptors. I got in at like the midway through the fourth quarter, basically. And in those couple minutes, I saw a lot of Stanley Johnson good minutes, and including the last basket that I've been seeing a lot of Hornets fans upset about on Twitter, which makes sense. Terry Rozier gets a shot off with a couple seconds to go. Stan, Stanley Johnson, first of all, I rewatched that play maybe four to five times to see him jump the pass to get up because they were doing this off-ball action, and they were switching everything. But Pascal Siakam got stuck, so Stan the man jumped out, and he jumped out, and there was a little bit of contact, which I can see the Charlotte Hornets fans saying that they was a foul, but I, I think it was a review. I, I, we'll see the last two-minute report what, what the people say, but um, that's back-to-back -back wins for the Raptors that got down to the wire against this team. They end up closing out, and that is a good sign, because this was a game that they did not have good play from some of their best players, and, and these are the grinded out games that the that the Toronto Raptors won endlessly last season, and they're starting to put it out a little bit more this year, which is a good sign. Again, this is a, a little tough spot for the Charlotte Hornets, because the last two games I could see people talking about the officiating as the reason, but I'm not one of those people. So shout out to the uh, the Raptors, four and, four and eight now, on their way to 500. The the Miami Heat are the hardest team in the league for me to gauge. Um, I know they were missing Jimmy. They were missing Tyler Hero today. And I think Avery Bradley also was out with, with the injury or something. They were missing some key quality players. But they still lost by 20 to the Detroit Pistons, which is rough. And when I look at the Eastern Conference of how many teams got better this offseason and then look at the Miami Heat and they're, they're, them getting better is really banking on Tyler Hero taking a step, is really banking on that $10 million they gave Myers Leonard for some reason, but they lost players like Jay Crowder, right? Jay Crowder was such a big part of their championship run last year. And then the Bucks got better with, like, Drew Holiday trades. The 76ers got better with Seth Curry and everything. Of course, the Brooklyn Nets just got better with bringing in James Harden, and that leaves the Miami Heat as, of course, a good team. And right now, they may not look like it, but they've been dealing with a lot of stuff. But even at their full strength, they're a good team. But these other teams made significant moves to be better. And the Heat didn't do that. And it's hard for me to watch my, I'm not going to say my boy Kendrick Nunn, but he's from Chicago, so I got a little bit of love for, for him, to just fall off a cliff as fast as he did. From being the first half of the season, he was like in real conversation for Rookie of the Year. That's not crazy to say that he was this close to winning Rookie of the Year, especially through the first half of the season. Came out of nowhere, and he was averaging 15, 16 points per game, and now he can't do anything. It is the weirdest one-year change that I've ever really seen in a negative, for real. I want to say shout-out to my boy Derrick Rose. 
Um, um, the the rookie center Isaiah Stewart looked really good. He plays with ferocity and he plays he plays that rebound game uh, very well. And of course, Jeremy Grant bet on himself and he continues to show why that was a good idea. The 76ers lost a close one to the Grizzlies. No Joel Embiid, but this is a game they should have won. It's it's so great to see John Moran back on the, on the court. Love some John Morant. I swear his hair is growing faster than, than anybody I've ever seen hair grow, and that's just a fact. Every time I see him, his hair is in a different style, and I know that takes hours, y'all. I got experience with the two. It takes hours, so you are a patient guy. And he came back, and he looked really good. He said he was rusty, which I could see that. But, again, coming back from a grade two ankle sprain as fast as he did to come out and lead his team to a win is important. But no Joel Embiid. This is still a game that the 76ers should be able to win. That's all I really want to say. This is a game they should be able to win. And this is the type of game that you want to see your all-NBA player, your second all-star, come in and take over. Just take over. And I know that hasn't been what Ben Simmons is. So it's hard for me to really gauge him as, like, when he is in a situation where it is his time to go. You know, the man has 16 rebounds, 9 assists. He had a couple plays down the line um, that really they kind of cost, and he, he t- attempted two threes, both of which were air balls. But this would be a type of game where I, I want to see Ben Simmons insert himself as the guy. And it wasn't him. It was Shake Melton. It was Toby until he stepped on the out of, bound, out of bounds line. So I don't know. I don't know if Philly fans, I think I would guess that Philly fans are probably 50-50 on Ben Simmons. And I think the general public is probably 75-25 on Ben Simmons. But I would want to see some diehard Philly fans give their opinion on Ben Simmons because this is the type of game where I'm watching and I'm like, Let's do something, Ben. Let's just let's just do something. And he just he just didn't really do it. Um, I I love Brandon Clark, but this season has been kind of scary to me. He changed his jump shot. And if you're a fan of me, you know that going into his draft class, there were five players that I knew about that I was I really loved, and Brandon Clark was one of them. He's a high efficiency guy, good defensive guy. He like I said, he he doesn't miss shots until this season. Um, so I want to see him go back to his old jumper, which is probably easier said than done. But they end up getting a win, and a lot of a lot of respect to them. I know I haven't talked about them a lot over the past couple weeks, but for them to go out there without John Morant and still win a bunch of games just tells to you how good of a group they really have. I cannot wait for Jaron Jackson Jr. to eventually come back, and then Justice Winslow with his blue side hair part to come back if he ever if he ever hits the NBA court again. The last game of the day is the Atlanta Hawks versus the Portland Trailblazers. I waited to this game to end so I could record this because this was a, a fun game to watch for a few reasons. The first half, it was all Atlanta Hawks, and, and the Portland Trailblazers win this game. But they didn't win this game. The Atlanta Hawks lost it. And, and yes, Damian Lillard had a couple very clutch plays, whether it be um, the steal, whether it be the charge, and things like that. Those are winning plays, and that's why Damian Lillard is one of the greatest in the game. But the Atlanta Hawks threw this game away. And Trey Young had a better game, and that's that's a, that's a good thing, I guess, because compared to what we saw from him a couple games ago. But in the second half, man, it was it was still very hard to watch for Trey Young. Um, he wasn't hitting any of his shots. And there was one specific play that is going to be burned into my mind because I still don't understand the thought process. Here, here's the scenario. They're down by two with 20, 25 seconds on the clock, 24 seconds on the shot clock. In a lot of situations, you hold for one because there's a one-second turnover. You know what I'm saying? But instead of getting a good shot, setting up an offense, they got a rebound. They pushed the Trey Young, and he shot it from, like, the logo. I, and luckily for them, it went out of bounds off of Portland. But I was so my Trey Young could not have known the situation for him to take that shot. He couldn't have known the situation for him to take that shot, especially when he was already one for eight on the night. It's a better game from him. Not still not still not a good game. Still not a good game whatsoever. And again, they're still dealing with injuries. This was Clint Capella's best game as a part of this organization. They're still dealing with injuries, but the Portland Trailblazers are dealing with a lot of injuries, Atlanta. First of all, Yusuf Nurkic broke his wrist or whatever it was, and they cannot catch a break with these injuries. Um, uh, Robert Covington had, like, the worst offensive performance I've seen from him since a couple years ago. And then CJ went out halfway through the game. This is a game that y'all should win. And that's not to mention, bro, and Enos Cantor got hella minutes. Has, and as Cantor not getting dominated more than what he was. And I know Click Appella was dominating the first half, but he cooled off in the second half. They weren't giving him the touches. He wasn't on the glass as much. It's just a – it's a – it's a young loss. You know what I'm saying? It's one of those losses that young teams end up having a lot. And this is a type of dirty, ugly win that veteran teams like the Portland Trail Blazer can squeeze out. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I would have put it. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty much it. Those are my takes on today's slate of games. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like. Let me know what you think. Call the game.